Hello there, everybody, and welcome to the first installment of Woof Wednesdays. This will be the video version of the, it's just like the University of Washington Athletics equivalent to Circling Sales Sports on Converge Media. So we're doing this in video form. This is the first overall episode. So there are going to be some things that we're going to work out the kinks. I'm obviously not in a normal recording um, setup, but with that being said, we're going to give this this is going to be the pilot. We're going to get it underway. So it's just going to be like Circling Shadow Sports on Converge. We're going to go through the different teams that we cover. Uh, we cover nine UW teams here uh, on Circling Shadow Sports. So we may look into expanding that. But, you know, with that being said, you know, UW football, men's and women's basketball, men's and women's soccer, baseball, softball, uh, volleyball, and men's and women's hockey. So um, with that being said, we will jump right into the football aspect of things where we saw some former Huskies, Huskies become pro dogs in the NFL draft here, starting with uh, Trent McDuffie, um, drafted 21st overall by the Kansas City Chiefs, uh, then moving over here to Kyler Gordon, drafted 39th overall by the Chicago Bears, tight end Kate Otten, uh, former uh, CSS alum, we interviewed him in the ACL interview series here when he was still at UW. Drafted 106 overall by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And a Buccaneers staffer has something interesting to say about UW football players saying that UW, UW kids come out of there well trained. They're good people. They're our kind of people. The good programs continue to put out good players year after year because there's something else that they do and they develop the kids there uh, and they play well. So that was really cool to hear. You know, from someone that's outside of the program, someone that's in an organization like the Buccaneers currently, um, having those sort of things to say about a Husky and other Husky players as a whole. Continuing here with the team notes and the former Huskies turning into pro dogs, center Luke Wattenberg was drafted 171st overall by the Denver Broncos. That is it for the drafted players. So McDuffie, uh, Gordon, Otten, and Wattenberg all drafted in the stand standard traditional seven rounds. Um, and then we get to the undrafted free agents and the mini camp invitees going over here. Defensive back Brendan Radley Hiles signed an undrafted free agent deal with the Cincinnati Bengals. Defensive lineman Ryan Bowman has a mini camp invite with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And punter Race Porter will take part in the Seahawks rookie mini camp as a tryout player. So, you know, continued success there for UW in the draft. In the 2018 to 2022 period, UW leads the Pac-12 with the most NFL draft picks um, in that time period with 23, five more uh, than the second overall university, which I believe is USC with 18. So that was definitely cool to see there and very cool to see some of these guys, uh, you know, McDuffie and Gordon continue to be more guys in that lineage of DBs who go from Washington to the league. Um as well as uh, Otten can, it goes to an organization with Tom Brady, so that should mean good success. L Wattenberg, a guy that uh, tested really well um, in his draft profile, joins uh, Russell Wilson and the Denver Broncos. Um, so overall, really happy for really hoping uh, for Reese Porter to get you know a good spotlight with the Seahawks here. You know, another guy that we spoke to uh, in the Seattle interview series, and really interested to see how those Huskies do around the NFL. Looking over to continued team news on May 2nd, uh, cornerback and set cornerback slash defensive back Jacob Covington entered his name in the transfer portal. So uh, mostly good news um, in the UW football side of things with a lot of guys going to the league, but then Covington obviously entering his name in the transfer portal. Uh, tough there. Heading over to the basketball side of things, on the men's basketball side of things, we saw two um, signees through the transfer portal. It's funny that we were just talking about the transfer portal. On the 27th, center Frank Kepnang signed with UW. He joins the Washington Huskies by way of the Oregon Ducks. He is one of five Ducks, or was one of five Ducks, to play in all 35 games last season, making five starts on the year, averaging 4.7 points per game, 3.1 rebounds per game, and 1.2 blocks per game, and 14.5 uh, points uh, uh, minutes per game uh, last season with the Ducks. So interesting to see what uh, Kipnang is able to do and probably expanded minutes, um, considering that UW lost Nate Roberts to the draft, um, as well as a few other guys that have entered the transfer portal. So it'll be interesting to see what UW is able to do with recruiting classes in the transfer portal in the offseason. 
Uh, continuing with that news, in uh, on May 2nd, UW added center Braxton Mia uh, via the transfer portal. He joins the Huskies by way of Fresno State. Um, Mia's, Mia's uh, sample size is a little bit tougher to look at. He played 32 games last season, averaging eight minutes per game with 2.2 uh, points and 2.2 rebounds per game. So I don't know. The raw tape is that he's got a lot of talent. He just hasn't really been able to uh, showcase any of that quite yet. So it looks like this may just be a sort of uh, different situation kind of thing where Mia is hoping to really jump jumpstart his career there. I think he's just in his, uh, he just played his sophomore year. That's it for men's basketball. As we head over to women's basketball, women's basketball also timed, uh, signed two players through the transfer portal. Uh, starting with guard slash forward Delea Daniels. She joins UW by way of the Cal Bears. She was a Pac-12 All-Freshman Honorable Mention in 2021, playing in 21 games, making 12 starts in that sophomore season of hers, um, hmm, uh, averaging 7.9 points per game while shooting 42.8% from the field. So in addition to Daniels, UW was able to sign forward Emma Gradhouse, she joins UW by way of Lehigh, where she spent four years at that university playing in 30 games last season, uh, averaging 12.6 points per game, 9.1 rebounds per game, 1.5 assists per game, one steal per game, 1.8 blocks per game, and a 44.8 percentage from the field. So, you know, looking at the men's side of it, it's a little bit tougher to see those two centers who are a little bit unproven um, and maybe looking for a new change of scenery. Daniels and Gradhouse look like they're going to be able to make more of an immediate impact to the women's basketball team than those two would be potentially able to make to the men's basketball team. Do I know that 100%? No. But, you know, just looking at their numbers, um, it looks like Gradhouse is going to be able to come in and, you know, make an instant uh, contribution. And Daniels looks like she could be part of the program for a few years here. Um, so those are both exciting to look at. With that being said, uh, we now transfer over to baseball, uh, and the UW baseball season hasn't been the easiest thing uh, to this point, but had a really solid series here over Stanford. Let's get to the game before that, though. You'll see the two games that UW played before and after that Stanford series, April 26th, excuse me, at Seattle U, a 2-6 to six loss. Player of the game, right fielder Kobe Wallace going 1-3 for three with 1 RBI. We then head over to the Stanford series before we get back to that Gonzaga series. Uh, UW played Stanford in three games set, as you can see here. April 29th versus number sixth ranked Stanford, a 4-3 to three win. So starting off the series with a solid win there. Put the game center fielder McKay Barney going two for five with one run and two RBIs. April 30th versus number six Stanford, a 2-6 to six loss. So tough there. I mean, you're playing the number sixth ranked team in the country. I expect you to lose at least one. Uh, play of the game, shortstop Cam Clayton going two for four with one run and an RBI. And then May 1st versus number six Stanford, an 11 to 10 win. Bottom of the ninth, bases loaded. Stanford throws a wild pitch. The runner from third is able to score, and UW wins that one, taking the series against the sixth ranked team in the country. Player of the game, designated hitter AJ Guerrero going three for five with two runs and three RBIs. So, again, just to harp on that a really solid series, probably the best series that UW has played this season, and they were able to beat the Stanford Cardinal, the number six ranked team in the nation. Going back there to that game that UW played after Stanford, uh, May 2nd at Gonzaga, number 12th ranked Gonzaga, a 2-5 to five loss on the road. Player of the game, pinch hitter Christian Dicochia, going one for one with an RBI. So UW sits at an 18-24 and 24 record, 11th ranked in the Pac-12. Uh, their upcoming series doesn't get any easier as they take on number eight UCLA at home for a three-game stretch. May 6th versus UCLA is a 7.05 p.m. first pitch. May 7th versus UCLA is a 2.05 first pitch. And May 8th versus number eight UCLA is a 12.05 first pitch. So, again, as I said, doesn't get any easier for the baseball team there as we transition over to the softball team who is now playing, uh, who also played Stanford over the past week. Before we get to that, though, again, we will look at the games that UW played before and then after we look at that Stanford series after Stanford, um, playing Seattle U at home on April 26th, winning that game 6-2, to two, player of the game shortstop Bailey Klingler 
going two for three with two runs and two RBIs. Then over here, looking at the Stanford series, you can kind of get how these things are going to go with the little broom uh, picture we've added in there, but we'll get over to the recaps first. April 29th versus number 21 ranked Stanford, a five to nothing win. Player of the game, number one, right fielder, Matty Husky, going two for three with two runs and three RBIs. Player of the game, number two for that game, starting pitcher Gabby Plain, who went seven innings, allowing only four hits, no runs, seven strikeouts, and against 26 batters faced. April 30th versus Stanford, a two to nothing win. Player of the game, number one and number two are both the pitchers from that game. Number one, starting pitcher Kelly Lynch, going 4.2 innings. Five hits allowed, zero runs, five strikeouts, and 19 batters to face. Um, play of the game number two, relief pitcher Pat Moore going 2.1 innings, closing that game out, allowing no hits, six strikeouts on nine batters faced while earning the save for that game. And then UW looking for the sweep there on May 1st versus Stanford, a 3-1 to one win. Play of the game starting pitcher Gabby Plain. Gabby going seven innings, four hits allowed, one run, the earned run, um, one walk, nine strikeouts on 27 batters faced. So with that win, um, UW got to a 10-game winning streak, and this was all coming after I remember being a little bit critical of UW following uh, series losses to Cal and then I think being swept by UCLA. Granted that UCLA is one of the top five teams in the country, it makes a little bit of sense. But, you know, if you wanted to really resurrect any demons from last season where – you had seeding issues, and you had to play Michigan in that weird super regional. You got to take care of business against these teams in your conference because you know the Pac-12 is such a good softball conference. Um, then we get to that game after the Stanford series, May 2nd versus Utah Valley, a 9-1 to win in six innings, run-ruling Utah Valley. Play the game number one, shortstop Bailey Klingler going three for four with one run and four RBIs. Play the game number two, Starting pitcher Kelly Lynch going six innings, allowing only one hit, one run that earned that run earned two walks, 16 strikeouts, a career high 16 strikeouts while facing 23 batters. That is an 11 game win streak for UW at the moment with that victory over Utah Valley. Heading over for team news for softball, starting pitcher Gabby Plan, we talked about her being uh, player of the game for the two of those games against Stanford. She would earn Pac 12 player of the Pitcher of the Week honors uh, for the second week in a row. She appeared in two games against Stanford, as we mentioned, throwing two complete games, including a shutout. She earned wins number 15 and 16 on the year. Through 14 innings, she threw 16 strikeouts, allowing only one walk and only giving up the one earned run. It is her fourth time this season that she has earned the Pitcher of the Week honor in the Pac-12 and the 11th overall time that she has done so in her career. On the season, Plain has a 1.88 ERA and 159 total strikeouts. Uh, with that being said, UW now sits at 10th in the nation uh, for softball with a 33 and 11 overall record, sitting at third in the Pac-12. So you, you know you talk about 10th in the nation, 33 and 11 record, and then sitting at third in the Pac-12 just shows you how good the Pac-12 is when it comes to softball. Looking ahead, softball takes a road trip to Utah, playing a three-game slate against the Utes. Starting on May 6th at Utah with a 4 o'clock first pitch, May 7th at Utah with a 1 o'clock first pitch, and then May 8th at Utah with an 11 a.m. first pitch. Heading over to soccer here, in team-related news, on the 29th, head coach Jamie Clark was named one of eight nominees for the Sports Leader of the Year Award. It is hosted by the Seattle Sports Commission. Uh, this award recognizes an individual leader or group of leaders uh, in the sports community who have made a significant or compelling contribution to promote a vibrant sports culture. So, you know, with that being said, um, in talking to guys like Dylan Tevis, Charlie Ostrom, uh, Gio Miglietti, they've all talked really positively about the culture and the coach and the man that Jamie Clark is. So this really, you know, uh, him being nominated for this award really is not that big of a surprise. And then looking at our last little wrap-up note here in women's hockey, on April 30th, the team as a whole celebrated its inaugural season, and not too much of it uh, was uh, put out there, but it did seem like the team named goaltender Fanny Metsa Tequila as the team MVP. So with that being said, that's all that we've really got for you uh, for Woof Wednesdays. This is the first episode going live on May 4th. Um, 
again, this is a really a really raw pilot, so we will get things going here and looking sharper, uh, just better as a whole. I'm tired as shit. You can see that. Uh, and so until we see you next time, this has been Woof Wednesday. Go dogs.